AI image generation has taken the creative industry by storm. The development in this space, especially in the past few months, has been explosive. In less than a year, we went from images that looked like this, truly <laughs> nightmare fuel, to great looking images that are not only well balanced, but also are directable. Midjourney and Dali, the main AI tools for most artists, are the perfect brainstorming tool. We can quickly iterate on an idea and get to an initial sketch much faster than any traditional route. But brainstorming aside, are there any other uses for these AI engines? Could we use AI to generate textures for 3D materials? Let's find out. Of course, AI cannot generate all maps. We're only going to use it for the diffuse part of our material, and more specifically as a quick way to produce generic surfaces like wood, concrete, mud, marble, things like that. Then we can take those surfaces and enhance them in specialized software dedicated to material creation. I first started with Midjourney. The past couple of weeks, Midjourney has added several powerful commands that could help with this task, in theory at least. The first one is Test P, which forces the AI to spit out an image that has more realistic qualities. Here's an image using the Test P prompt and one using the Test prompt. The latter one does the exact opposite. It forces the AI to create an image that feels hand-drawn. The other command in our toolset is easily one of the most powerful additions in Midjourney. It's the Tile command, and it produces an image that can be tiled. And the results are truly stunning. Having an image that can be tiled is very important when creating a material, but tileable images are only part of the equation. We also need our images to look good, and unfortunately, this is where things fall apart. Here's my first attempt at a concrete surface. With the exception of maybe the second image, none of the other images look anything like concrete. But even if they did, the surface quality is not that great. They look more like a Photoshop job gone wrong. My second try was equally disappointing. The first image kinda looks like what we're going for, but the rest feels way too random. The third image especially feels very out of place. I'm not exactly sure what these blue and white diagonal lines represent. To cut a long story short, no matter what I tried, I didn't manage to get a good looking surface. Here's what I got back when I asked for a pavement surface. I kinda see where the AI is going with the first and second image, but things get progressively worse with the third and fourth. No matter how much I played with the syntax of the prompt, I didn't manage to get anything resembling a realistic surface. I used the word surface, then I switched to texture, I've experimented with the test and test P commands, nothing really worked. Even in surfaces where I expected to get really good results due to the sheer amount of images available on the internet, I still wasn't getting the results I needed. This for example is my best attempt at imitating a wooden surface. As you can see, it's not really a convincing texture. It's a shame really, because the tile command works incredibly well, so if the surface creation worked as expected, we would have had a really capable texturing tool. But I can't be too mad at Midjourney, the tiling is absolutely wonderful. For a while, I got distracted and just played around trying to create cool patterns, and I was definitely not disappointed. But for our purposes, the images produced with Midjourney cannot work for material creation. And that's when I decided to try out Dali. Right from the get-go, the images I got back were exactly what I was hoping for. Concrete looked like concrete, wood looked like wood, and most importantly, if I wanted to, I could expand an image and get a bigger view of the surface. I had a lot of control over the final image, which is not a surprise if you watched one of my earlier AI videos. For example, I managed to go from this image, a close-up view of a wooden surface, to this. To do that, I used Dali's Erase feature. Here's how that works. 
Once I have the image downloaded, I resize it in Photoshop, so it takes a smaller area of the screen. I then upload it back to Dali. With Eraser, I signify the area I want to adjust, write down the prompt, and then let the lead do its thing. After a few seconds, we get several options to choose from. As you can see, with the lead, we have a lot of control over the texture creation. But as good as all that sounds, the lead has its own set of problems. For one, we cannot go any higher than 1024 by 1024 pixels. Midjourney, on the other hand, allows for much higher resolutions. But the problem with Midjourney is that we just cannot get a realistic surface out of it. So if I had to choose between a high-res version of a Midjourney surface and a low-res version of a Dali surface, I would always pick the one done with Dali. The other issue with Dali is that we cannot get tileable textures like in Midjourney, or at least with the same ease as Midjourney. With Midjourney, we can just type in the tile command and we're good to go. With Dali, we have to use hacks to get truly tileable textures. And last but not least is the fact that we cannot really control the perspective of the images. I tried several different prompts like 2D texture or surface, but whatever word I used, I always got back images that had some perspective. And since we want to use these images for texturing, what we really need is a top-down view of the surface. Of course, the perspective shift can be fixed in post, but we're getting to a point where we're investing quite a bit of time preparing bits and pieces before even attempting to build a material. So that's where we at when it comes to these two engines. Now let's see what kind of materials we can get if we fine tune and heavily edit these images. The materials look great, especially considering the low-res images we started with. It's also worth noting that all of these materials have a complete set of maps, diffuse, normal, roughness, and specular. But here's the thing, in order for us to get these results, we have to rely on other software. Getting all that just from the AI engine is not possible. So to produce these materials, I've used Substance Sampler. This allowed me to have a ton of control over the final result. Here's how the material looks inside Sampler. As you can see, I have a bunch of different layers that add small bits of detail here and there. Cracks, dust, water damage, glossiness, and other little things. Everything is fully parametric, so we can easily enable or disable a specific feature or make bigger adjustments. For example, we can increase the cracks, and also increase the level of damage. We can also add other features like moss, adjusting the spread level, and the color. Pretty much every single parameter we might need can be adjusted. The beauty of this workflow is that the software handles all the necessary maps on its own. Normal, roughness, height maps, they're all generated automatically. There are things we as users have to adjust in order to get nice looking maps, but for the most part we don't have to fuss over every single map. Pretty cool, right? Let me now show you what we started with and how things were prepared for Substance Sampler. Here's the original image I got out of Dali when I typed the prompt Floor Tile Texture. The image has some perspective issues, but that can be adjusted in Photoshop. So I grab the middle part of the image, fix the perspective so it looks like it's a top-down view, and then resize it so it takes up a quarter of the whole image. I then uploaded that to Dali, and as we did earlier, I marked the area Dali should work on. After a few seconds, I got three results back. And that's really it. I downloaded the image I thought would work best and then got to work in Substance Sampler. 
So now that we have a better picture of the whole process, is it really worth it using AI for material creation? Yes and no. As is the case with uh, regular image creation, AI is great as a concept tool. We can quickly iterate through ideas until we find something that looks good. But when it comes to actual material creation, I think we're much better off building the material from scratch. For one, the actual surface information we get out of the AI images is not that great. And in a lot of cases, the surface information doesn't look realistic. So not only we have to work with low fidelity images, but we also have to work with images that don't really resemble the real thing. Let's take as an example this wooden surface produced with the Lee. Yeah, it does kinda look like wood, but we could get much better detail if we just snapped a picture. The same applies to the ground or concrete surfaces. Of course, we cannot always find the perfect surface to photograph. I totally understand that, and that's exactly where specialized tools come into play. Substance Sampler, and even better Substance Designer, have a ton of dedicated features that can give us these detailed realistic surfaces. We can build wood, concrete, and any other surface we can imagine from scratch in a procedural way and with great fidelity. We can start with bigger landmarks first, and then slowly add other details like dirt, glossiness, cracks, etc. I feel we can get a lot more bang for our buck with these specialized tools rather than aimlessly typing in prompts in an AI engine and hoping to get something good out of them. I don't want to discourage you from using AI at all. As you can see, we can create good looking materials out of AI generated images, but these are mostly quick and dirty results. Of course, that doesn't make the materials bad, whatever gets the job done. If it works, there's no reason to try and do things the proper way. But when it comes to materials for a production environment, AI is still not there yet. Midjourney just cannot produce realistic surfaces, but it has an absolutely killer tiling command. On the other hand, Dali can produce some semi-realistic surfaces, but we're limited to a very low resolution image. So for now at least, I think there are better ways to produce materials. But who knows, maybe in two or three months time, things will be completely different. Either way, I would say keep an open mind, experiment with both options, AI and traditional material creation tools, and see what suits you. Your use case might be different than mine, so the semi-realistic or abstract results might be the perfect fit for your work. And with that, I think we've pretty much covered everything I had in mind. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.